have understood the vectors addition and scaling of vectors. Next let us see sir the subtraction of vectors. So, the next operation I am going with subtraction of vectors. subtraction of vectors. When we consider subtraction of vectors, let us say I am supposed to get a bar minus b bar, but the subtraction of vectors can also be obtained using the addition. Because just now we have seen what is that minus b bar represents, how you write minus b bar as in the case of before we have seen in scaling operation when alpha is equals minus 1, what is that minus a bar represents. Similarly, you can obtain minus b bar. That means minus b bar is similar to b bar, but just there is a word sir, direction is reverse, direction is reverse. So now when you consider the addition between a bar and minus b bar, that becomes what sir? A bar plus of minus B bar. I mean this we can write it as A bar plus of minus B bar. A bar plus of minus B bar. That means first we get minus B bar and then and then we follow again addition rule between these two. Again we follow what sir? Addition rule between these two. You will be getting the subtraction of two vectors. Very simple. That means the subtraction of two vectors also we obtain using addition, also we obtain using addition. So that's why, so let us consider now, let's say for example I am taking, let's say sir this is our A bar, let's assume this is our A bar. Now I am taking let's say another vector called B bar, this is our B bar. Now in order to perform, okay, this subtraction of the two vectors here, that means as we said a bar minus b bar is a bar plus of minus b bar, a bar plus of minus b bar, first get what is minus b bar. Means we know b bar, so what is minus b bar sir? Instead of going in this direction it will just reverse its direction. That means our minus b bar will be like this, our minus b bar will be like this. Now follow the addition rule between a bar and minus b bar. Follow the addition rule between a bar and minus b bar. That means it will be like this. How? Again I am taking, taking let us say minus b bar, or moving minus b bar parallel to itself or just drawing minus b bar at the another tip of a bar and joining starting and ending points so that I will be getting a bar minus b bar. That means, so this is our a bar, this is our a bar. Now, I am drawing minus b bar parallel to itself, I am just drawing minus b bar at the another tip of a bar. This is nothing but our minus b bar. Just join these two, just join these two. So this becomes now what sir? a bar minus b bar, a bar minus b bar. That means we have followed our addition rule itself. We have followed our addition rule to what sir? Perform the subtraction of the two vectors. So that's why we can say that subtraction of two vectors is also obtained using addition rule, addition rule and we are not going anything okay separately but only the thing is that the, for the getting subtraction we are just getting the another vector what is that minus b bar just by reversing the direction of this plus b bar. So once we get minus b bar again we are what's using the addition rule and so that what's we are getting our a bar minus b bar as per the addition rule. So that's how sir subtraction of the two vectors can be obtained. So till now we have done with addition and scaling and subtraction of the two vectors. The another and the okay most important part you might have even seen in your words are lower standards like the multiplication of the vectors, multiplication of the vectors. So when you consider this multiplication multiplication of the vectors. <coughs> that means if a bar is a vector and b bar is another vector 
another vector. The vectors can be multiplied in two ways. The vectors can be multiplied in two ways or the vector multiplication what sir? involves two possibilities. One is called the dot product, the other one is called what sir? cross product. So when you consider the dot product between two vectors, that is A bar dot B bar. This is one of the way to multiply the two vectors which we call it as dot product. Means just we know sir as per our uh, means earlier standards directly the dot product between the two vectors how do we obtain just by multiplying just by multiplying the magnitude of the individual vectors that is magnitude of A bar into magnitude of B bar and the cos of the angle between these two vectors. Let us say angle between these two vectors is theta and cos of that what's the angle means you can say what's a cos theta that's all that's all this is called what's a dot product that means when we look at this dot product it's just a product of two magnitudes and a cos of an angle between them cos of an angle between them that means here this is also a constant value this is also constant value and this is also what's a a constant value. So always the dot product leads to a, what's a, a constant value but there is no need of mentioning the direction for this constant value but we are multiplying the two vectors as a dot product. That means the dot product of two vectors always becomes what's a, a scalar quantity, a scalar quantity. Now so because the dot product becomes a scalar quantity then for what vectors the dot product becomes finite that is other than 0. Let us say the two vectors are parallel to each other. If the two vectors are parallel to each other that is if A bar and B bar are parallel to each other or parallel to each other then then so what is the angle between them? Normally the angle between the two parallel vectors is what's a 0 degrees. That means theta is equals becomes 0 degrees. So what is the dot product becomes now? The dot product is A bar dot B bar is equals becomes just the magnitude of A bar into the magnitude of B bar into cos 0. And cos 0 becomes 1. So now it becomes finite sir A bar dot B bar. That means the dot product will be the dot product between the two vectors is finite and which is not 0 especially what sir when the angle between them is what sir is equals to 0 degrees. Suppose let us say when they are perpendicular to each other means if the two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So what is the angle between them? The angle between them becomes 90 degrees. If theta is equals 90 degrees that means cos 90 becomes what here sir? 0 that means a cross product here A bar cross B bar will become what sir here? 0 that means it will not exist. It will not exist. That means it becomes 0 what we, what we can say the cross product is sir lead sorry dot product sorry sorry it's not cross product it's dot product the dot product becomes 0 that means the dot product between two perpendicular vectors becoming what's a 0. Now as one of our student is asking doubt considering the same vectors a bar and b bar earlier added how to find the angle between them. One simple application of our dot product sir very simple. The simple application of a dot product is finding the angle between two vectors. Finding the angle between two vectors. So, so as a function of this what as a once uh, means when you look at as a part of this expression as a part of this expression what you can say angle between them the cos of the angle between them is nothing but the cos of the angle between them is nothing but here a bar dot b bar by modulus of a bar into modulus of b bar modulus of b bar so that's how we can evaluate simply by, by multiplying the two vectors and dividing with its equivalent magnitude we can evaluate the angle between them okay angle between them or theta you can also write it as what's a cos inverse of something like that so that's how means the basic application of the dot product is to find the angle between the two vectors to find the angle between two vectors and also it is just used to what's a multiply the two vectors now when you look at the other other words uh, multiplication the other type of multiplication 
okay as you might have already know is called the cross product cross product a bar cross b bar cross product when you look at this a bar cross b bar how do we write the basic formula is same it is the magnitude of a bar into the magnitude of b bar into the sign of the angle between them into into a unit normal a unit normal to the words of both a bar and b bar vectors means a unit normal to both a bar and b bar vectors now what is this unit normal is very simple it's a unit vector which is perpendicular to both a bar and b bar vectors a bar and b bar vectors that means from this we can understand that or a bar cross b bar having certain magnitude and also having certain direction but when we consider our dot product it just towards a producing a constant value there is no direction has been specified here that means we can understand that the cross product of the two vectors always a vector but the dot product of the two vectors is always a scalar is always a scalar and especially when we find the cross product the resultant vector of the product of the two vectors the, the resultant vector of product of the two vectors is always perpendicular to both the vectors is always perpendicular to both the vectors for example sir let us consider with respect to our words means rectangular coordinate system let us say let us say okay x bar let us say sir x bar sorry i'm just what now calling it as let's say i think we are talking about a cross product uh, a unit vector along x direction a unit vector along x direction along x direction as ax bar let's say unit vector along y direction as ay bar a unit vector along z direction as az bar so when we consider what's a, a unit vector along x direction as ax bar along y as ay bar along z as az bar as per this suppose let us say sir means when you multiply this ax bar cross ay bar that means it indicates what's a it's a cross product between the two vectors along x and y directions along x and y directions which is perpendicular to both definitely what sir or z is perpendicular to both that means as per this analysis x y and z here that means ax bar cross ay bar will produce now what sir ax bar cross ay bar will produce simply az bar will produce simply az bar similarly when you multiply ay bar cross az bar that means when we perform the cross product between the two vectors along y and z okay y and z will result what sir our next vector is nothing but along x bar which is perpendicular to both is nothing but our x similarly our vector between what sir z and x that is az and ax bar will give us what sir ay bar and if any one you change the order and instead of taking what sir let's say ax and ay let's say if i have taken ay and ax then it becomes what sir minus az bar because we are multiplying what sir means the vectors in opposite direction ay bar cross ax bar becomes here minus az bar and similarly az bar cross ay bar becomes here minus ax bar and ax bar cross az bar becomes here minus ay bar minus ay bar so that's how means we can understand basically what sir means the cross product is basically a vector and that vector direction is always perpendicular to the what sir the direction of the two vectors which are involving in that cross product which are involving in that cross product so that's how sir basically we means we can consider what is our dot product and the cross product here dot product and cross product as one of our student has been asking sir um, arjun gadavi how to find uh, sir the a bar dot b bar without angle between them very simple 
but without the angle between them, how can we find A bar and B bar? So first, sir, without the angle between them, you just multiply first their magnitudes. Multiply for their magnitudes. Normally, when we are, for example, let's say, when A bar is given, means definitely it is a vector. And B bar is given, definitely it is also a vector. That means, when we consider, let's say, A bar has been like this. Just assume, for, for example, sir, A bar is equals 2AX bar plus 3AY bar. Let us say our B bar is equals some <clears throat> 3AX bar plus 4AZ bar. 4AZ bar. That means from this, from this, we understand basically because just now we understand before the dot product between two parallel vectors it is finite and the dot product between two perpendicular vectors it is zero. So when you just what's a perform the dot product here, dot product here, that means just this is now what multiplied with this. Now you can understand ax bar and ax bar are similar vectors there are along x direction. When they are x, x when they are along x direction, that means what it becomes here ax bar ax bar. Definitely you can know when they are along same direction, what is the angle between them? It is zero. That means what do you get now here, sir? 2 into 3 is equals what here? 6. Similarly, uh, 2 into this becomes ax bar dot az bar, which are perpendicular to each other, it becomes 0. Similarly, ay bar dot ax bar becomes 0. Similarly, ay bar dot az bar becomes 0. That's how we can evaluate dot product. That's how we can evaluate dot vector. That means the dot product between two vectors can be evaluated just by knowing the unit vectors along them, the unit vectors which are pre present along those directions. Means without knowing angle also, sir, we can understand because unit vectors along which direction they represent. So based on that, if they are similar direction, means they are what, sir? Angle between them is zero. If they are different directions, means the angle between them is what, sir? 90 degrees based on the coordinates. That's how we can evaluate. The one more student, Partha. Sir, this direction is given by right hand school. Yes, sir. Means when we go for coordinate system, we can understand right hand or what, sir? Left handed system. Just for example, what I am saying means when it is in order, normally when we start with x, next is y, next is z. So when you just cross multiply x and y, you get what is perpendicular to x and y is the next one, which is immediately our next order, sir. After x and y, what we get z? So you get z. But if you take y and x, means in reverse way, you are coming what, sir? Left side, yes. y and x, then you get minus az bar. Minus az bar. So that's how what, sir, we are deciding. So as per the order, first we say x, y, and z. So x into y will produce what sir? Our third direction z. And y into z will produce our next direction x. And what sir? Z into x will produce our next direction y. But when you change any one, the order, definitely what sir? The vector becomes here reverse. The direction will be changed. So that's how, okay, we can understand what sir here. What is cross product and the dot product. Cross product and dot product. That means the dot product between two what sir? Vectors which are present along similar direction, it always becomes finite. Along perpendicular vectors, it becomes zero. It becomes zero. So that's how, sir, we can see the basic fundamentals. I think you might have already know about this as a part of your previous classes. But we can just understand, sir, what is dot product and what is cross product. Why we are seeing this? Because when we go for fields also, when a field has got x and y component, when you do certain operation on that field, because if electric field is also a vector. Magnetic field is also a vector. When we do certain operation on this what's a field, let's say some type of multiplication or whatever it may be, the resultant field is along which direction? To identify that, we need what's all these fundamentals. We need all these fundamentals. So that's why all the vector operations will be what's a using every time as a part of our, okay, what topics which we'll be discussing. Because when we really see the topics and begin with the problems, then you will realize, okay, the application of each and every topic which we are seeing here. So that's how we can understand what's a, what is <coughs> multiplication of the vectors. What is multiplication of vectors, right? Now, <coughs> right, let's continue with our what's a, next part. So these are the words of various operations performed on the vectors. We have seen vectors addition, we have seen vectors subtraction, we have seen what's the 
vectors <coughs> scaling we have seen product of vectors or multiplication of the vectors but the next concept sir is another important term here is a vector differential operator vector differential operator del vector differential operator del so this is another important point sir and based on this we have 50 to 60 percent analysis in our what's the electromagnetics in our electromagnetics now let us say i am taking what sir what is vector differential operator how do you define it if you see vector differential operator del is equals del is equals yes as per the doubts we are saying sir partha the divergence is the extension of dot product first means to understand what is divergence first we should know what is vector differential operator vector differential operator not only this what's the differential operator we are calling it a vector differential operator del but this also works on a scalar which gives the concept of gradient which gives the concept of gradient so first okay try to what's some understand what is vector differential operator then we see what is this operation on a scalar what is this operation on a vector and then you understand what is divergence or what is curl what is gradient and what are their physical significance with respect to the field sir with respect to the field so try to understand carefully now i'm just saying okay del which is called vector differential operator sir i'm just writing for example for a rectangular coordinates okay or del is nothing but how we define we define like this we just say like a x bar into do by do x plus a y bar into do by do y plus a z bar into do by do z what is this do by do x do by do y or do by do z they indicate but sir the variation of any quantity a variation of any field along spatial coordinates called x y and z x y and z that means the variation of any quantity along the what's a spatial coordinates can be indicated by the operator called del which i am calling what's a here vector differential operator why i am calling a vector differential operator because do by do x do by do y do by z there what's a partial differentiations along x y z which indicates the variation of any field along x y z direction but it is indicated using what sir it's a overall a vector quantity it's a vector quantity so a x bar into do by do x plus a y bar into do by do y plus a z bar into do by do z so that's why we call it as what's a vector differential operator vector differential operator that means it may be working on a what sir a scalar or it may be working on a vector but when it works on a vector it leads to the two cases because sir, when we apply del with respect to a vector what is the operation we can perform I mean, definitely we can just multiply them so when we just multiply them what happens sir when we just multiply them there are again leads to the two concepts called what is the dot product between del and any other vector and the cross product between what sir del and any other vector that gives the two physical what sir significant what terms here called divergence and curl so before that before that sir let us see the working of this del on a scalar field on a scalar field let us assume phi of x comma y comma z phi of x comma y comma z is a scalar field is a scalar field means for example sir you can take like this also let's say phi of x comma y comma z is equal to some 3 x y z square 3 x y z square which is a scalar field now i'm just applying what sir this del on this scalar field so which i'm calling this here del phi del phi here del phi is called what sir gradient of phi gradient of phi which indicates which indicates the variation of the scalar field 
along our spatial coordinates x, y and z. x, y and z. So, which is called sir, gradient of phi. But we can say that gradient of phi is definitely a vector. Phi is a scalar field, but when we apply del on to the phi, means which is nothing but gradient of phi, which becomes a, what's a vector quantity. Let us see with respect to our example, sir, now. Our del phi means what you can write as per the formula. That means ax bar into dou phi by dou x plus ay bar into dou phi by dou y plus az bar into dou phi by dou z. Az bar into dou phi by dou z. Now, if ax bar into dou phi by dou x plus ay bar into dou phi by dou y plus az bar into dou phi by dou z. So, now we can understand. So, with this, sir, when you again perform the partial product here, when you again perform the partial product here, means partial, what's a differentiation here. So, what we get, let us see, dou phi by dou x means just differentiate this phi with respect to x. Differentiate this phi with respect to x. Let's see what you get now. ax bar of dou phi by dou x, that means just differentiate partial with respect to x. So, what other terms can be treated as constant 3y z square. That means it becomes 3y z square and dou, what's the differentiation of x with respect to x becomes 1. So, into 1 plus a y bar into, uh, what is the other, means other than y, what is the term we have? 3x z square, which can be treated as constant. So, it becomes now what's the a y bar into 3xz square into differentiation of y with respect to y becomes 1. Okay, 1 plus similarly az bar into dou phi by dou z. So, when you differentiate with respect to z, all other terms are constants here. 3xy into what's the z square? What is the differentiation of z square becomes 2z. 3xy into 2z becomes 6xyz. 6xyz. That means now you can see. Del phi is a vector quantity, is a vector quantity, which is what's up? Expressed as a function of what here? X, Y, Z. Suppose if we consider what's up? It means any point in the what three-dimensional spatial coordinate system. So, means certain values of X, Y, Z, definitely our del phi becomes a vector, having components along X and Y and Z direction. So, which is called what's here? Gradient of phi. So, physically signifies that gradient of phi means what's here? The variation of the scalar field. How does it is what's changing with respect to x, y, and z coordinates? So that is called what's here? The gradient of phi. Gradient of phi. Similarly, when this del works on, when this del works on what's a <coughs> vector. Let us say a bar is a vector. Let's assume a bar is a vector. When you consider the relationship between or the working of this vector differential operator on del, the vector differential operator, what's the, which is working on a bar, the relationship can be of two types, as we said. Because when you just what's the, consider del into a bar, because del is a vector and a bar is a vector. Because both are vectors, when you just multiply, what are the possibilities we get? The possibilities, that means, we may get either as a dot product or we may get as a what's a cross product. That means when you consider the dot product between them, let's say del dot of a bar, del dot of a bar is one of the possibility. Similarly, del cross of a bar is another possibility, is another possible relation between del and a, especially when we go for products. That means here del dot of a bar, here is it's also called the divergence of vector, which is also called divergence of vector A bar. Divergence of vector A bar. Similarly, del cross of A bar, which is called curl of vector, curl of vector A bar. So, okay, so we just understand what is the names, means from the product called the divergence of a vector and curl of a vector. But let us consider the first term, when you look at the first term here, is called del dot of a bar, which we are calling it as what's a divergence of a vector. 
what is the physical meaning of divergence what is the general meaning of divergence so when we consider general meaning of divergence means let us say there is a point source of light let us assume there is a point source of light like this when there is a point source of light when it is illuminating light then what happens when it is illuminating light the light can travel in all directions the light rays can expand what sir travel in all directions means i hope you understand the light emitting from a point source of light which is traveling in all directions that means what you can understand is here the light rays are diverging from a point source means it gives the outward the nature of outward flow of the light rays the nature of outward flow of what sir light rays similarly when you consider before we said thus if there is a charge present it is fixed to certain position and there is certain electric field around it how does electric field is also present sir the electric field also what will be present in all directions it is also also present in all directions that means from this what we can understand so means from this what from this diagram it is clear that the electric field is what sir diverging in all directions coming from a point source and diverging in all directions so this is called basically what sir divergence but don't think that the divergence means only this the outward flow even let us say sir even let us say there is some other charge let us assume there is a minus q charge here minus q charge here let us say the several what's a field lines are terminating at minus q charge from other places just assume from other places then what it is called yes this is also what this is basically what we can say practically converging and this is called what's here diverging so means converging means the what the field lines are coming from infinite are coming from several what's a points and they are terminating at a single point diverging means they are starting from a single point and expanding to the different directions are traveling along different directions this is called divergence and this is called what's a convergence and both of these can be indicated by using a quantity called the divergence of a vector divergence of a vector suppose for this if the divergence becomes positive for this what we can say the divergence becomes negative the divergence becomes negative that means the nature of means when we consider with respect to our field sir means in both the cases like this is electric field in both the cases means here the electric field is diverging in different directions from positive charge here the electric field is converging at negative charge from different directions means this indicates the outward flow nature of electric field this is what sir the converging nature of the electric field both can be explained by using a quantity called here the divergence of a vector sir we understand now that when the divergence can be positive or negative but when the divergence becomes zero when does the divergence become zero let us assume sir in a field let us say means the field lines are entering like this the field lines are entering like this and the same field lines let's say coming out of a surface just assume coming out of a surface they are entering and what's they are coming out then what is the diverging nature here is there any what's the field lines are expanding in different directions no they are going in what's in similar direction okay means they are just entering and leaving out of a surface but nothing is converging or diverging nothing is diverging or converging that means you can say here the divergence divergence is nothing but zero the divergence is nothing but zero as one of our student as there is a doubt nitin goel so diverging is nothing but spreading diverge is nothing but spreading means you are thinking that only it is expanding but even what sir coming together is also can be explained using diverging both converging and diverging nature can be explained using the divergence of a vector don't think that it is spreading means always going outward even what sir coming inward also we can understand using the concept of divergence for outward it is positive 
for inward it is what sir for converging it is negative okay for converge it is negative now another question from uh, monaza sir is divergence defined for a single vector or a group of vectors divergence sir is always defined for a single vector means you can apply divergence between sum of two vectors but that is again obtained as a sum of individual vectors for example let us say del dot of a bar plus b bar if you look at this can be written as del dot of a bar plus del dot of b bar means individually the divergence is applicable with respect to what's a single vector the divergence is applicable for a single vector you can apply for a group of vectors as a sum or as a, okay as a sum but that is again what individual sum of their divergences individual sum of their divergences right so that's also we can understand that means whenever the divergence of any vector becomes zero the divergence of any vector becomes zero that vector here a bar is called solenoidal a bar is called solenoidal if the divergence of any vector is zero that vector is called solenoidal similarly if our field also becomes what sir the divergence of any field becomes zero that field also we can call it as what's a solenoidal field solenoidal field that means basically the divergence of a field explains means the diverging or converging nature of a field diverging or converging nature of means how a field can what's a expand in different directions how a field lines can be what's a converging or what terminating at a single point from different directions this can be indicated using what sir our divergence but if the divergence of a vector is zero then it is called what sir solenoidal vector solenoidal vector similarly now let us consider the another what operation that means another product between del and a which is nothing but okay which is nothing but del cross a bar del cross a bar now i am taking sir for example del cross a bar which i am calling it as what sir curl of a vector a bar curl of a vector a bar curl of vector a bar sir what is this curl of a vector a bar means here very simple in general what is the meaning of curl curl means what sir means we say a words like curly hair means the hair is like having some rotating nature means in general curl means what sir the rotation rotation or some curly direction when you look at let's say a field is like this just assume a field is like this a field is moving like this let's say having what's a certain direction what you can understand from it so this is called the curly nature this is called curly nature of a field so that can be indicated by what's a del cross a bar the rotating nature of a field will be described by the what's a the quantity called curl of a vector normally when you look at sir with respect to the electric field always electric field may be what's a diverge or converge but never the electric field what's a here means rotates but coming to the magnetic field for example when you consider an inductor having certain turns when a current is flowing through the inductor what happens sir there is a magnetic field around that inductor how does the magnetic field will be the magnetic field will be having certain what's a rotating nature rotating nature because that is also looks somewhat curly like this when a magnetic field what's a means looks like this means how do we analyze sir we and means analyze that means that quantity can be analyzed with respect to the vector curl curl of a vector curl of a vector that means del cross a bar is called what's a curl of a vector which gives the rotating nature of a what vector a rotating nature of a field suppose let us say with respect to our electric field if we consider just now we understand that our electric field is not having any rotating nature it is just having what's a diverging nature that means what is that electric field should become our del cross e bar means the curl of that vector should become zero because nowhere our electric field is what's here rotating whenever del cross e bar is equal zero del cross e bar is equal zero means we can understand that that e bar is called 
irrotational vector irrotational vector as the name itself indicates irrotational vector irrotational vector means when something curl of that vector becomes zero it is not having any rotating nature I mean, with respect to our electric field we can say our del cross e bar is equal to zero sir this we will study this is nothing but our maxwell second equation from our what uh, electrostatic potential we get this concept maxwell second equation that the curl of electric field is zero means the electric field is having what's a zero rotating nature it is not having any rotating nature it may be either divergent or convergent as one of our student kundan there is a doubt that okay how does a solenoidal field look like sir look at this look at this a field lines are just what's a oriented in similar direction similar direction they are not diverging or converging they are not expanding from a source they are coming from a what's a they are not what's a they are not coming from a point source or they are not ending from a point source they have they have some uniform what's a entry and they have what's a uniform coming out and this type of what's a field we can call it as what's a in solenoidal field okay solenoidal field this is called solenoidal field all right so that's how sir we can understand what is this vector differential operator del vector differential operator del okay which is what's a a vector quantity and the operation of this del on any scalar field is called scalar field is called okay here del phi nothing but gradient of phi gradient of phi and when you operate this what's a del on a vector there can be two possibilities call the divergence of vector and curl of a vector the divergence of vector indicates the divergence of vector indicates the diverging or converging nature of a field and whenever the divergence of any vector becomes zero that vector is called solenoidal vector similarly the the del cross of a bar is called what's a curl of the a bar which gives the rotating nature of a field Rota rotating nature of a what's a field if suppose that curl of a vector becomes zero then that vector is called irrotational vector irrotational vector this can be best understood with respect to the electric field sir when we go for okay field properties we'll be analyzing this in detail so means whenever the what cross product of a vector becomes zero this is simply called what's here irrotational vector irrotational vector so that's how sir we can see the basic fundamentals related to vectors basic fundamentals related to the vectors so with this sir we have done with okay the vectors part and next <coughs> and next sir we have to see about the coordinate systems which are the basic okay references to indicate any field in different directions so before we are sir we begin with this coordinate system we'll just break for some 10 to 15 15 to 20 minutes and then once sir we'll come back after break we'll continue with all coordinate systems and their relation so means we start with what is cartesian coordinate system what are the coordinates how to represent a point on on it and what is what cylindrical coordinate system what are the different coordinates what is the relation between cylindrical and rectangular similarly we start with spherical coordinate system and we see the relation and we see the most important parameters as a part of the coordinate systems called what are differential length elements differential surface elements differential volume elements which are very very important sir to evaluate many of the words sir expressions in the case of our further topics okay right so we'll just meet after the break for 15 to 20 minutes right